Chinese knockoffs have been a running joke for a long time. Since China has positioned itself to be a manufacturing powerhouse for the past couple decades, it's no wonder they seem to churn out an abundance of cheap knockoffs. Interestingly enough, this trend of knockoffs produced in China actually extends beyond the consumer industry. It has even shown up in Chinese fighter jets. China has a long history of copying foreign aircraft with and without permission. We have, you know, always uh, been shameless about stealing great ideas. And in this video, we're going to look at how China has continued this trend with their fleet of their current fighter jets. And for longtime subscribers, you know that whenever we introduce a new aircraft on the channel, we'll add them to our overall aircraft ranking list. And this aircraft ranking system was specifically designed to compare any type of aircraft from any era. So stick around to the end to see how these aircraft stack up against the others that are already on the list. One doesn't really have to know anything about aerospace engineering to see how China has clearly borrowed heavily from foreign aircraft designs. Just looking at aircraft like the Xi'an Y-20 and the C-17, the J-31 versus the F-35, the Yilong UAV versus the MQ-9 Reaper, and of course all the aircraft that we're going to focus on in this video, the Chinese fighter jets. Starting with the Chengdu J-7. The Chengdu J-7 was actually a licensed copy of the MiG-21. The USSR actually sent and instructions on how to build and assemble the MiG-21 to create the Chengdu J-7. These aircraft are incredibly similar, but there are some differences in these aircraft, specifically in the areas where the design documentation that the USSR sent the Chinese were incomplete. For instance, the hydraulic systems and the internal fuel arrangements are different in the J-7 than they were in the MiG-21. So overall, the J-7 was a slight improvement on the MiG-21, but by the time the J-7 got to full production, was in the early 80s and the MiG-21's first flight was in 1955, meaning that this technology was at least 25 years behind the Soviet Union by the time that full mass production was achieved. With the desire to improve the J-7 even further, the Chinese started designs based on enlarging the MiG-21. What resulted from this design effort was the J-8, which essentially took the J-7, made it bigger, and then later on, on the J-8-2, they took the intake from the nose and put them on the sides in order to put a ray dome in the nose allowing for the aircraft to have a more modern fire control radar and allow for more powerful engines. Another aircraft that looks eerily similar to another foreign country's aircraft is a supersonic fighter bomber jet. This aircraft is called the Xi'an JH-7. And as you can see, it looks incredibly close to the F-111 Aardvark, which was also a supersonic fighter bomber. Obviously, the biggest difference between these two aircraft is the fact that the F-111 had variable sweep wings, while the JH-7 does not. But I'll let you be the judge of whether or not the Chinese copied the F-111. The next aircraft, the Shenyang J-11, came about in the late 90s. And similar to the J-7, the J-11 was developed from an agreement between Russia and China to develop their own version of an aircraft developed in Russia. In this case, it was the Su-27. The first two that were actually assembled in China were so poorly assembled that it actually required Russian assistance to help them rebuild it correctly. But as China advanced and got better at assembling these aircraft, so did their boldness with developing aircraft parts. As the program advanced, China started to incorporate some local airframe parts into the design of the J-11, and initially Russia didn't object to these parts. But in 2004, this co-production of the Su-27, or the J-11, ended because China was found to be developing a J-11B, which is a variant without the permission of the Russian government, which was in direct violation of the co-production agreement that they had signed. The ending of this agreement absolutely did not stop China from going ahead with the J-11B. So essentially Russia allowed China to produce their aircraft in China, then took that technology and made a slightly better aircraft without their permission. Amidst all this controversy a couple years later in 2006, Russian engineers actually accused Chinese engineers developing the J-10 that they were developing a more or less version of the Israeli Lavi, incorporating a quote, melting pot of foreign technology acquired design methods. These senior Russian engineers who were accusing these Chinese engineers of doing so said that they heard this from their Chinese colleagues at the time. And the Chinese of course refute this saying that the Lavi and the J-10 consequentially look the same. However, the J J-10's design was actually based on the cancelled J-9 from the 60s and 70s. But again, I'll let you be the judge of whether or not you think that the Chinese copied the Israelis. Despite the 
controversy between Russia and China, this didn't stop the Chinese from still pursuing purchasing Su-33s from Russia. In fact, almost three years after co-production of the J-11 had fell apart, China was still pursuing purchasing these Su-33s. But once again, this did not stop China. In fact, they acquired an unfinished prototype of the Su-33 from Ukraine in 2001, which China in turn used to study extensively and reverse engineer a lot of the technological developments which they used on their J-15. So they may not have been able to purchase the real thing, they were able to develop their own knockoff brand. So essentially they took their licensed J-11 and combined technologies from the J-11 program and this acquired Su-33 to make the J-15. And they even launched yet another program from the cancelled co-production of the J-11. This program was the Shenyang J-16, which had its first flight in 2011. And while they were burning bridges in Russia, they were also going after technology in the United States. According to a 2009 report from the Wall Street Journal, the Pentagon confirmed that information on the F-35 program had been compromised to an unknown attacker appearing to originate from none other than China. And I think it's these last couple of programs that I've mentioned that really encapsulate the Chinese strategy as a whole. And I also think that this is echoed in their consumer products as well. China will take a foreign technology like the iPhone, for instance. It's going to be produced in China. They'll then in turn take that technology and use it to spin off their own companies and create their own technology based on those proprietary technologies with or without permission, which is exactly what they did with the J11B, the J15, the J16. Nevertheless, I think this is a defining moment for the Chinese Air Force because I think this is where they really are starting to advance beyond their competitors in Russia. I think maybe one of the best examples of how China is finally advancing beyond Russia is with the fifth generation fighters. For instance, the Su-57 program is older than the J-20 program. But the J-20 program has been much more successful both in practice and on a production scale. It's thought that Russia only has about three or so active Su-57s in operation right now. While the Chinese have been able to produce 50 J-20s, and according to many reports, the J-20 actually has better stealth capabilities than the Su-57. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the rankings of all the Chinese operational fighter jets. So in order from oldest to newest aircraft, we have the Chengdu J-7 coming in at about $25 million reportedly, giving it a cost score of 7. As for speed, it also gets a 7 coming in at a top speed of Mach 2, having a low climb rate but given the fact that it's pretty old, this doesn't hurt it as much. And the J7 scores a 4 for versatility given its low amount of hard points, its relatively short range of about 530 miles, and for innovation it scores a 3 since it's basically a copy of the MiG-21 with a few modifications. And for effectiveness it scores a 5 due to the fact that it has been a cost effective option for a lot of foreign militaries outside of China. It also actually happens to be the only operational Chinese fighter jet that has seen any air-to-air -air combat with one air-to-air -air kill and zero losses, so technically it's undefeated. This gives the J7 an overall score of 4.40. Next up we have the J8, but I couldn't find a reliable cost estimate, so I'll just have to give this a 5. For speed it gets a respectable 7, being pretty much on par with the J7. For versatility it scores a 5 given the fact that they increased the number of hard points from the previous J7, increased the range a little bit, the climb rate and the ceiling of the aircraft. And for effectiveness, it scores a four as it hasn't proven to be quite as hardy as its predecessor, the J7. That gives the J8 an overall score of 4.65, slightly edging it over the J7. Next, we have the Xi'an JH7. Again, I couldn't find reliable data as for our cost, so again, I'll have to give it a five. For speed, it's gonna get four since it's below average and slightly slower than its near peer foes. For versatility, it's gonna have to get a three given the fact that it only has six hard points, extremely limited range, a fairly low ceiling, and a pretty low climb rate as well. For innovation, it gets a four due to the fact that it mimics many of the capabilities of the F-111, except in a much worse way and a long time after the advent of the F-111. And lastly, for effectiveness, it gets a three due to the fact that it suffered severe technological mishaps even from the very first flight. That gives the Xi'an JH-7 a pretty bad score of 3.50. Next up we have the Shenyang J-11 
coming in at a cost score of 6 due to the fact that it's a fairly affordable aircraft for its price and capabilities. For speed it gets a solid 8 because of its top speed of Mach 2.35 and a pretty good respectable climb rate of 59,000 feet per minute. For versatility it gets a 7 due to its 10 hard points, much improved range from other aircraft in their fleet, high thrust to weight ratio, and great maneuverability. For innovation it gets a 6 since it pretty much is an SU-27 but they did add some slight modifications especially in the J-11B. Although the J-11 still hasn't seen combat, it has proven to be a pretty reliable platform, giving it a score for effectiveness of 7. This gives the Shenyang J-11 an overall score of 6.75. Next we have the Chengdu J-10, scoring an 8 for cost. A 7 for speed being a pretty quick aircraft with a great thrust to weight ratio. For versatility, the J-10 gets a score of 6, being slightly above average for things such as its 11 hardpoints. For innovation, it gets a 5, being a fairly decent aircraft, but nothing really pushing the envelope with aerospace engineering. And for effectiveness, given its high number of hardpoints, its high thrust to weight ratio, and fairly decent climb rates, one would expect it to perform pretty well in combat scenarios. That gives the Chengdu J-10 an overall score of 6.15. Next up we have the Shenyang J-15. J-15 scores a 9 for speed, being the fastest aircraft in the Chinese fleet and having the best climb rate of any of the Chinese fighter jets. For versatility, it gets a 7 because of its 12 hard points and the fact that it's a carrier-borne aircraft, although it gets a 4 for innovation due to the fact that it relies so heavily on foreign technology technology, and for effectiveness it gets a 3 due to its severe operational challenges. Another telltale sign of the fact that this hasn't been an effective platform for them is only 6 years after its first flight they're already talking about completely replacing it. Specifically for the fact that it's such a heavy aircraft this severely limits its payload capacity when it's launching from a carrier. Next we have the Shenyang J16 coming at a score of 5 for cost again because I haven't found the cost. For speed it gets an 8, being a pretty quick aircraft again, coming in at a top speed of Mach 2. For versatility it gets a 7 due to the fact that it has 12 hard points, a decent payload capacity, and is incredibly maneuverable, similar to the JLF. For innovation it gets a 4 again because it is such a new aircraft and it really hasn't advanced anything, relying so heavily on the foreign technology as we discussed previously. For effectiveness it gets a 5, being a decent aircraft so far, nothing too crippling to report operational wise but again it hasn't been able to really prove itself either. And finally we have the pride of the Chinese air fleet, their only 5th generation fighter and probably the best 5th generation fighter outside the United States. Coming in at a price tag of over 110 million dollars, that gives it a cost score of 3. It gets a speed score of 8 being the fact that it has a top speed of Mach 2. For versatility it gets an 8 for its stealth capabilities and its 6 internal hard points. It has the best range of any fighter jet in the Chinese air fleet, coming in at 1200 miles for combat range. For innovation, the J-10 gets an 8 due to the fact that we are actually starting to see what looks like China developing its own 5th generation fighter, and one that's actually seemingly more capable than its counterpart in Russia, making it the third country to ever bring a 5th generation fighter to production. For effectiveness it gets a 7 due to its reduced radar cross section and the capabilities previously mentioned. That gives the J-20 an overall score of 7.50. Now let's see how these stack up against all the other aircraft we've previously mentioned on the channel so far. First with the Xi'an JH-7 coming in at 33rd, followed by the J-7 at 32nd, J-8 in 31st, the J-15 in 27th, the J-16 in 23rd, the J-10 in 21st, the J-11 in 18th, and the J-20 in 10th place. So every time I do one of these videos I know I'm just going to hear it in the comments section so feel free to let me know how wrong you think I got it down in the comment section below. What do you think of my rankings? And I know my rankings are very fighter jet heavy right now so let me know in the comments which aircraft you like to see make it to the ranking list. Thank you so much for watching and Godspeed.